Hi, this is yours truly. The Joker. <laughs> I'm here to read a book called From Darren Shane. If you want to call it from them. From the zombie underground. I'm here to read a majestical, beautiful, theoretical, mystical mystery of a book. Hip hip hooray! Ha ha! Here we go to the underground. Aha! Yay! I read the books as a child, and now we're getting more sophisticated. But we gotta go to a past that created things, and now we're doing things to create other things. Two of a kind, forevermore. Aha! Then and now. Then? Now. A past is a past and a future is forever after! Ha ha! Becky Smith's father was a bully and a racist. He often beat B and her mom. When he was working into the country, B loved and feared him equally. She swore to himself that she didn't share his vicious racist tendencies. But at the, at the same time, she never challenged him about them. One of B's teachers, Mr. Burke, warned her that she risked becoming just like her dad. And she became a play along with him. But B had never paid much attention to which teacher said. Or what teacher said. B was a tomboy and could hold her own with any guy her age. She liked music, surfing, the web. I liked that too. Hanging out with her. All training. Mates, just an adventure girl who thought she'd lead a normal life and never do anything special. Then zombies attacked her school. <sighs> B and her friend didn't know how the dead ha had come back to life or why so many of them were on the loose. Or what the strange mutants, no pun intended, who could control them were. And there were no way time... Time to find out. They had to run or die. So they ran. We have choices too. Gotta go back and forth. What a monopoly of a board game. <laughs> B's dad, Rush Eater, he led the group to safety, playing the part of a hero to perfection until they hit a snag and zombies closed in on them. To delaying the zombies, he w told B to throw a black boy named Taylor Bayer to them. And because she had always obeyed her father when he gave her a command, she did. The zombies bit into the screaming Taylor with relish as he begged B to save him. Horrified by what she's done, B abandoned her mysterious dad and raced back into the school to reach for another way, uh, way out. But she only found zombies and mutants, or rather they found her. So it's yin to the yang. We find their sceneries, and they find them up the middle as the world turns. <laughs> On his suitcase, the freshly zombie teller brought up with B. She, she had been scratched by another member of the undead and was terrified that she was about to turn into one of them. But teller took her mind off that worry when he ripped her chest open. The last thing she saw was teller biting her, still beating her. Then she died. People die. People don't understand the sunshine and darkness. And sometimes you look at the man, you didn't know you were dead for years. You're just going st straight through the sceneries. You're not you're, you're you're not going through certain sceneries or situations. But people are older than they think, and they're gonna get back to them anyway. And sometimes they're they're dead in different ways. What's your G? 
<laughs> no, I smell the burning hair. It's a nasty, acid smell. I burned my eyebrows once when I was playing with the lighter. I've never forgot that foul aroma as my face wrinkles with distance, distaste, and even a nastier stretch and kicks in and almost, I almost gagged. What the hell is that? I'm trying to find, place the sickening scent. A tall man struggling past, facing skull, a blaze, trying to slap out the flames, but failing. He falls to his, falls to his knees and shakes his head widely from side to side. The flames grow thicker, glowing more brightly, and I peg the source of the smell. It's burning flesh. With a, a startled cry, I fell away from the man on fire and glanced around and desperately for something to quench the flames with or someone to call for help. It takes all of two seconds to realize I'm in just as much trouble as the guy with the burning pumpkin for a head. I'm in a large room. Not one, not once I recognized. I, I should be in my school, but this is a place I've never seen before. Pure white walls, except where they've been scor scor scorched. Several uh, oversized windows, lots of people on the other side of the glass peering in, studying the chaos. There's a small team at the center of the room. Six people in the black leather pants and jackets. I'm cool with the gothic and I'm cool with them too because I'll be rocking the leather. Ha <laughs> ha, man, I even be better. Faces hidden behind the visions of motorcycle types of helmets. Each is armed as a, cu as a couple with flames. Throwers. Other um, pairs and stun guns, two with the spears, lots of figures around the six in leather, 15 or so men, a handful of women, a couple of teenagers, a girl no more than, than eight or nine years old, except they're not normal people, they're zombies. I, 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 could, I could categorize that even before the memories of what happened in my soul clicked into place, I've never even, I, I've seen enough horror films to know a fully paid up member of the living dead when I see one. They don't, they don't move as stiffly as uh, most uh, movie zombies, but they have the vacant expression. They're missing body parts. Some are caked in blood. Careful. That could be anybody. Careful what you see on the street corner. Ha <laughs> ha. Their teeth are gashing together hungrily. They're covered in scars and scratch, uh, cuts and a whisper of green moats grow, grow over their wounds. Wait, I never saw moss in any of the movies. I only saw that one that on the zombies in the internet clips of the attack of Pulaski and on those who stuck with my school was attacked when I was killed I flashed a memory of Tyler Baylor jamming his hand into my chest and ripping my heart and I moaned painfully and my hands snaked to my breasts to find out if that really happened or if it was just a dream but I'm distracted before I can Check one of the leather-clad tor tormentors at the centers of the room. He's bigger than the others, tall and burly. He breaks away from the group and sprays flames in a worldwide semi semicircle, scorching the zombies closest to him. They sequel, sequel and peel away. It seems like the dead can feel no pain, too. Rage, one of the others barks. Get your arse back here. We've got to stick together. Saw that. The tail one retorts and pushes forward, coming uh, towards me, letting fly with more flames. I forget about anything else and flee from the fire survival instincts kicking in. Following a man and woman who were synced si from the, um, the last burst, I try to call the guy in the leather to plead with him to stop, 
but there's something wrong with my in my mouth. It feels so it like it's full of pebbles. All the emergency is stra strangled. Oh, ah, ugh, sound. One of the zombies, a woman leaped into the tall guy's back and gnawed at his shoulder. He lowered his flamethrower, grabbed her hair and tucked. She claws at his helmet. He bends over to shake her off. While well, I'm naturally inclined to side with the zombie. It's clear. What a page. That we're in the same boat. An enemy of theirs is an enemy of mine. So I dart forward to help the dead woman tackle off her foe with the flamethrower. One of the others in the center yells a warning to the suitable rage, but it's too late. I rush him from his blind side and throws him at him, at him myself at him. I probably wouldn't be able to knock him over by myself, but the weight of the woman helps gr uh, drag him down. As the guy in the helmet yelps, I grab the horse of the flamethrower and wrestle it from him. No pun intended from a guy who wrestled in my way. He hangs on tightly, roaring for help. But then the woman bites his arm and digs through the leather of his jacket with a curse. He grips loose it. A second later, I've ripped the horse from the, the tank, strapped to his back and device, and render, rendered it useless. The person with the flamethrower peels away from the group and starts towards me. Kathy, someone shouts, don't break, rank, but rage needs. Forget about him, we need you to cover the rest of us. As the woman hesitates, I heft the ho hose. It feels quite solid and moves in the guy on the, and moves on the guy on the ground. He, uh, he put his pushing the female zombie away, trying to make him to kick at her. I take a couple of practice swings, then lay him heavy, bringing it down as hard as I can over the top of the helmet. The guy hollows with pain and back away from me as I swing at him. The zombie gurgles and shoves me aside. Hurry after him, claw, clawing at the legs like a cat. She tries to grab a hold. My gaze fixes at a small bite of bones sticking out of the ends of her, and I'm stopped in my tracks by another flashback. Page six. We done here for tonight. Man, what a fright. Man, have a good night. <laughs> As a joker is in his own board game in the projects. Will I go? Will I go to a den? -in? Will I find someone? Will I go to sceneries? Will I pick and choose? Will I lose? Will I gain things? Will, will I trust? It's all through the cards, all through the thoughts and messages. What a board games. Till next time. Ha!